how do you get a cost effective backup solution that can provide at least some kind of a protection for your data. That's what we are going to discuss today. I bought a 14 terabyte Western Digital hard disk for less than 200 bucks on a deal and not just one, I bought two of them. So let us see how to use these external drives on your Mac to set up an effective backup solution that can provide some sort of failure proof protection for your data. So here are the two hard disks and this need external 12 volt power supply for each hard disk and the hard disk comes with a USB cable. This is an external normal spin type hard disk not an SSD one. Each has a capacity of 14 TB and that's how I'm gonna set up with my Mac for my data backup. If you are going to use this hard drive on your latest MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, you can buy a USB-C dongle that can convert your USB ports into multiple ports or you can use some dedicated docking stations that can use to expand your MacBook's port. So once you connected both these hard disks, you have to make sure both hard disks are good. You can find out disk utility. That's a built-in app for Mac users that can check if they have any error on your disk and look like both disks are fine. This step is completely optional. So we want to make sure both disks are pretty good before we go further. Just in case if you have only one hard disk, you can format that hard disk for backup your data. I wouldn't recommend to use one hard disk for backing up your information that you want to retrieve later. The risk is that if something happened to that particular hard disk, your data will be gone forever. Sometimes you may try your luck to retrieve those data from the hard disk. So if you cannot do that, and if you wanna try with a third party data recovery service, that's going to be expensive. Sometimes it's going to be very expensive to retrieve that data. So I wouldn't recommend just to use one hard disk to save your data. Instead of that, I always recommend to have at least two hard disks and set up that hard disk to save your data. So just in case if you are using this disk for the first time, and if you have only one disk, you can format that disk for your Mac and you can use that disk for backup your data. You can go to your disk utility on Mac, tap on erase, and you can give a name over here, say for example, backup one. And the format. So the first question, what kind of a file format that you have to use while you format your external hard disk? So they have a couple of options provider when you go to your disk utility. The first one is APFS, and the second one is Mac OS extended and the third one is MS-DOS or SFAT. So for a Mac user, forget about this MS-DOS or SFAT. And now the question is whether you want to use Mac OS standard or APFS format. And this APFS file system is recommended for SSD and flash drive. According to Apple, you can use this APFS file system for your regular hard disk, HDD. So based on this, I'm going to use the file system Mac OS extended. And for the next one, I would go for GUID partition map. And you can click on this erase button. Then your hard disk will format into Mac OS journal for backing up your data. So this is perfectly fine if you have only one hard disk to back up your data. Now let us see how to use two hard disks to set up your backup system with your Mac OS. So I'm going to connect the second hard disk and now there are two hard disks popped up on my system. So when you going to use two external hard disks to back up your data, we can utilize the RAID configuration to set up your both hard disks that can provide at least a mirror backup and you can retrieve the data if one of the disks fails. 
we have two hard disk the same size and the best option that we can get with these two hard disk is to go with raid one configuration and that's going to save a mirror copy of one disk to another one and the benefit is that if you lost one of the disk you can get back the data from the second disk i hope you are enjoying this video don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on the bell icon for latest updates so let us continue So select mirrored or RAID 1 configuration here, click on next, select the disk that you want to configure with your RAID 1 configuration. So I'm going to select both of the disk here that I want to include in this RAID configuration. After you configure the RAID 1, the both disks will combine together and act as a single disk. But still, your data is going to save in two disks separately. So click on next and here you can say a name for that and the format that we already discussed you can have an option for APFS format or Mac OS extended so I'm going to select here Mac OS extended format and the RAID system is RAID 1 and the total disk capacity is 14 TB if you have two different 14 terabyte disks then in a RAID 1 configuration you will get total 14 TB because one disk is mirroring the data to the other one and for the chunk size that's recommended from 16k to 256k so this depends on what kind of a data you are going to use and it is already specified here for best performance choose a chunk size that matches the size of the data you are going to access and if you are using this disk for a database backup the files will be very small so you can use the lowest chunk size in my case i'm going to utilize this disk for video backup and photo backup so I'm going to use maximum chunk size here, 256K. And it's gonna confirm whether you are gonna create a RAID 1 setup here. While it's creating the RAID system for you, if they have any data already in the system, that's going to erase. So make sure that there is no data on this external hard disk and it's creating the partition map and configuring my RAID system. Whenever I connect back the both disk, I can see the external backup. And on my disk utility, there is a individual disk that I can see on the sidebar and I can see the external setup. And just in case, if you want to repair or if you end up any problem with one of this disk system, you can open your disk utility and come to this RAID set and you can see all the disk configured for that particular RAID system. and you can repair if they have any problem for individual disk. So what I'm going to do here, just for a demonstration purpose, I'm going to eject one of the disks. And let me remove one USB from this port to make sure everything is good. And connect back. And we'll see whether it's gonna pop up the RAID configuration with just one disk. And now in the disk utility, if you check the RAID setup, you can see one disk is missing or damaged. Since we removed this USB port from the system and now it's connected only one external hard disk to my computer. Still, I can access the file I copied to this external hard disk with one disk. So it's some kind of a protection for your files that can be used for an average user. And we were talking about the two solutions that's just for your data backup. Now let us see how to configure a RAID 1 solution with your two hard disks, one for the data backup and one for the time machine. And before we continue, let me tell you something. If you are using time machine backup and the data backup on the same hard disk, you might experience a considerable performance issue, especially when you try to access two partitions at the same time for the data and the time machine. So I wouldn't recommend to do the data backup and time machine backup at the same time. If you are planning your RAID configuration for both data and time machine backup, you have to partition each disk in advance into two different partitions. One dedicated for time machine and one dedicated for data for each disk. And I'm going to partition around two terabyte from disk one for my time machine. And the rest of the 12 GB I'm going to dedicate it for my data. 
I just initiated the partition process and waiting to complete it. Start the partition for the second disk. And now we have both the disks, each have two partition, one two terabyte for the time machine and the second 12 TB for the data backup. Now I have to start RAID 1 configuration for each partition in each hard disk. So let me go for RAID Assistant and select RAID 1. First of all, I'm going to select my Time Machine Backup so I can see two TM Backup that I already partitioned before. And for this Time Machine Backup, let me name something related to Time Machine Backup. And I'm going to select Apple File System Format for the Time Machine Backup. And similarly, I'm going to create an, another RAID 1 configuration for my data. And let me go to Disk Utility and select RAID Assistant. And let me select RAID 1 configuration and select the two other partitions that I set on these two hard disks for data. Comes around 12 terabyte. And select those disks and click on Next. Let me give a name to identify. And for the data backup, I'm going to select Mac OS Extended Format and let me create RAID, that's it. Now I have set two RAID disks, one for the time machine backup in two terabyte and the other one for the data backup in 12 terabyte. And finally, let me set up this RAID 1 partition for my time machine backup. Let me go to disk utility and from this disk utility, I can mount or eject any partition when I want. So that's an easy solution when you do a time machine backup, you can eject the data backup partition. And also the time machine will try to automatically backup every time when it detects the partition. So I would recommend to eject that partition and mount it back whenever you want to do a time machine backup. So let me open the time machine settings, scroll down for add or remove backup disk. Now you select the Time Machine RAID 1 partition from the available disk option to configure as a Time Machine Backup. And now it's automatically selected for your Time Machine Backup. Then it will automatically start to save the entire backup of your MacBook into the RAID 1 configuration that we set up for Time Machine Backup. Even though this is an easy solution, I would 100% recommend this configuration I would always recommend to have a dedicated disk for your time machine backup rather than choosing the same hard disk for data and time machine. This is not a bulletproof solution to protect your personal data and information. As an average user, this is the best cost effective solution that I can set up with my Mac. And I would recommend to use APFS file system if you are going to configure the same setup with an SSD drive. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Click on the subscribe button here and press the bell icon for latest updates. And we will come back with another video soon. See you then.